and welcome to my channel about creating and using hand spun yarn. Welcome to all my new subscribers. A big hello and thank you for uh, subscribing to my channel. I really do appreciate it. Um, especially in my absence, I don't usually record too much during the uh, school year, the academic school year, I usually film during the summertime. And so I do appreciate people subscribing even though I wasn't putting out too much content. So thank you so much for joining me here today. I have a lot to talk about today. Um, obviously I'm not going to talk about everything that I've been up to over the last several months. That would be, it would be hours long, but I thought I'd just give you a quick um, overview of some of the finished spins that I have, some projects that I'm working on, and then also I want to talk a little bit about some commercial uh, yarn projects I'm working on as well. So let's get started with spinning. So I'm going to pick up where I left off last year with a spin that I had started. This is a Border Lester Corriedale Cross from Elizabeth Hubbard at Hubbard Handspun. Uh, Liz is a shepherd in Oregon, Bonanza, Oregon, I think she is, and she has a, a large flock of Corydale and Corydale Cross sheep. I bought a couple of fleeces from her, and last year I was fortunate enough to purchase a Border Lester Corydale Cross. So if you saw my episodes last summer, you would have seen uh, a little bit of my processing of this fleece. So what I had was able to do is I've got a couple of skeins here that I finished. This is a two ply Aran weight. I spun it from drum carded bats. So what I did is I took my locks and I fed them into the drum carter all in one direction. I think I ran it through two times. And so I created let me see if I can get a bat here. It's a very beautiful open fleece. It's very, very easy, very easy to process, very easy to spin. And so here's one of my bats that's, actually this has been sitting around a little bit. So I don't know about you, but I tend to get sidetracked with new projects all the time. But um, you could see how beautiful this is. It's a beautiful, rich chocolate brown color. I've got a couple bats still that I need to spin here. <laughs> yeah, you can just see it's just lovely. Okay. And uh, I actually made something with this yarn. Here's the, so again, here's the, here's the locks. It's about a four inch staple, five inch, four to five inch staple. Just absolutely beautiful. So I made these fingerless mitts with this yarn. They're called the, um, I think they're called the lambing mitts. I'll put a link below. So here's my finished. They have this wide garter stitch cuff that you can fold over like this. And it's basically a ribbing you know, uh, pearls and then it's sort of a garter, garter bands. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with these. I mean, obviously it's too, uh, too hot to wear them now, but um, yeah, I was happy to use my hand spun. So I have made it a goal of, of my hand spinning life to start using some of my hand spun because I keep making yarn and then I don't do anything with it. So even a small project like this was a, a really good exercise in, in seeing how my hand spun knit up. And you can really glean more information about your hand spun if you use it. So I made this out of this fleece. Uh, what I would really like to do with this is make a, um, a vest, you know, color, a color work vest. Um, I think this would be very, very hot in a full cardigan it would be more of like an outdoor jacket because it's quite thick I think I I would say this is a heavy air and weight and uh, like I said I spun it from drum carded bats and then I did a short forward draw on this so I would say that this is uh, some say with semi woolen but uh, you know those those names are hard to it's hard to sometimes label 
Um, this, I feel that this yarn has more of a, uh, it's got some of that worsted characteristics that it's very smooth, but yet it's also very lofty because of the preparation, not from comb to top. So that's one thing I've been working on. So I'm a follower of um, a lovely lady who lives in Sweden. Her name is Caroline, and she has a shop called Hörner um, och Eje. I have no idea if that's the right way to pronounce it, but her name is Caroline. And she has a, a patron-only podcast that is so inspiring and so lovely to watch, uh, well worth it to uh, support her and her channel. She has, um, this is this kind of Amber from A Lovely Yarn Podcast, had made a shawl out of yarn that she had hand spun from Caroline. And it was, I think it was an alpaca, angora wool blend. And it was this beautiful, huge shawl. So I was inspired to go to my drum carter and pull some of my um, fiber out. And I made some, again, I drum carted this. And this is a, I think it's a Cormo, get a little bit closer here for you to see. It's a Cormo Romney wool base. It's 50% wool. And then I also put in some Muga Silk, some Angora Rabbit, and some Fawn Alpaca. And I made these, these, these are a couple of little nests that I have left from that spin. And it was in my intention to get enough so that I could make a shawl like Amber did. Well, so far, this is what I have. So this is my yarn. And I was going for a textured woolly yarn that would have a lot of drape. So I eyeballed about 50% wool, 50% um, alpaca angora, and a touch of silk. And I managed to get one skein so far. It's nothing fancy, you know, it's just, it's just sort of an understated and it's kind of a, a well, it's beige. <laughs> it's beige. So I am planning to do some more of these and hopefully uh, get it knit up into a, a shawl project in the future. So it's another one of my finished spins. So I have a fair amount of commercial braids in my stash. I've been purchasing a lot less of those since I started preparing my own fleece. I actually find that I prefer to use my own prepared fiber. When you comb your own fiber or card your own fiber, I just find that it's so easy to spin. It's, it's very open and just easy, very easy to spin. But I do still have quite a lot of commercial braids in my stash. So I had it in my, my intention that I would pull some out and I would start spinning for possibly a shifty, either a shifty shawl by and Andrea Maori or the shifty sweater. So this is how far I got. I got one of these braids. This is a five ounce braid from a dyer in Vermont. Her name is um, Beth Ann and it's Allons-y Fiber Arts. This is a two ply merino fiber that I spun from the fold, long draw, on my spinning wheel. And I am not the best, uh, merino for me is, it's very hard for me to be very consistent with my merino spins. It's very fine and I think the fibers tend to clump up on each other. But overall I'm very pleased with this, with this skein of yarn. I think it's really lovely and I think that it would be really pretty uh, blended with some of the other colors that I have in my stash. As a matter of fact, I'll show you um, the next one I'm spinning. This is her card. Uh, this is called Grace, and this is also 100% Merino. This, I bought this a long time ago, and it's been sitting in my stash for quite a while, and it's all these beautiful shades of 
you can see I, I took it out of its braid so that it would kind of uh, puff out a little bit because when you have, you really shouldn't store a lot of braids in your, fi uh, in your stash and have them compressed at all. This has been in my stash for quite a while, but isn't it pretty? It's really pretty. So what I was going to do is spin it the same way I spun this one, and then these two would go beautifully together in a project. Now in terms of spinning, uh, a, combed prep, a commercially combed prep like this, I found that the best way for me to do it would be just to pull off a section, make sure the ends are pretty fluffy, and then what I do is I fold it over my hand like so, and then I, I spin it from the tip. So then I can do long draw. And it's really great to do for short stapled fibers that are commercially prepared. Um, if you're gonna do a short forward, because the staple length is so short, and you can see I just pulled out a tiny little staple, and the staple's around three inches. So if you're spinning it worsted, at most you're gonna spin pull out one and a half, maybe two inches of fiber at a time. And for me, that's very tedious, though I know a lot of people do really love to spin that inchworm style. I, I just don't, I think I don't have the patience for it. So this is next up on my wheel, but uh, what happened is I get, <laughs> I get sidetracked in the summer with my, um, my fleeces and, and washing fleeces and so on. So this is kind of, again, I'm, I'm kind of, I start something I don't always follow through, but this is, um, I did start this and I'm gonna finish spinning this. And I'll have those nice two, two finished schemes. I think that when she, I ordered them together and I think she even mentioned that they would be very pretty together. So I'm gonna put these two together in some project, maybe with some other braids as well. If you saw my last video, I did a little quick demo of how I was spinning long draw on my Lendrum. I had found some baths that I had made some time ago, and it was a Shetland, uh, it was an oatmeal colored Shetland that I purchased. And so I finished spinning that, and then I, I'm making a little swatch. I'm thinking even if I don't, you know, make a garment or a project, from the fiber, at least if I make a swatch, I can get a good idea on how the yarn is gonna behave. And then when you're spinning, you can say, oh, I didn't like that when I was knitting it. Because sometimes I'll leave little slubs in my yarn when I'm knitting, uh, spinning. I think, oh, it won't matter. But um, when you're knitting it, you'll be like, oh, there's that slub. Or sometimes I'll get a thin spot I think I'll just leave that thin spot in there. But then you're knitting, and then all of a sudden you get to this really skinny spot. You know, the rest of your yarn is spore to decay or whatever. And then you get to this skinny part, and uh, you think, oh, maybe I shouldn't leave those skinny parts in my yarn. <laughs> of course it is, um, you know, it's hand spun, so some people like that homespun look. Other people want their yarn to look more uh, perfect and commercially spun. Um, Maybe people that have low skill just say they like the homespun. <laughs> it's good quality, <laughs> right? Um, anyways, um, so this is my swatch. I, want, I thought you, it might be interesting for you to see what it looks like. This was my, my yarn that I demonstrated in my other video. You can see how, I mean, it is woolen spun, but it's, it's very irregular and it's got lots of different texture here. So here's, the, here's what I have. Here's the ball. It's a it's a very um, very soft, bouncy yarn with a, with a nice velvety hand. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking after I wash and block this, it might smooth out a little bit. Oh, so, uh, so what I did is I started going through some of my hand spun. I thought I really need to start knitting some things with my hand spun. So I started a project with a yarn that I had spun quite a while ago. Again, it was sitting in the bottom of a basket, just waiting to be used. This is a Polworth Silk Blend. 
that I bought from Friends and Fiber, I think, on Etsy. I spun it into a two-ply yarn, and then I plied it together, trying to keep the color gradation. So it's a rainbow color. Uh, you can see the, the different shades here. And I was inspired by Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel Fibers podcast, Fat Squirrel Speaks. I think she's making this shawl here. It's called the Quaker Yarn Stretcher. It's actually designed for hand spun. It's a free pattern. Uh, no, it's not a free pattern on Ravelry. I guess it was free at one point, but it is no longer free now. I had to pay for it. I think it was $3 or something. So I thought even though this is some of my earlier hand spun, I was just really interested to see how it would start knitting up. And I have to say, despite all the inconsistencies and irregularities and you know lower, maybe not enough ply, it's actually knitting up okay. I, I was really, I mean it's clearly, I mean the colors are, are amazing and it's definitely got that kind of early hand spun lumpy bumpy kind of appearance, but I, I'm surprised that it's actually knitting up as nice as it is. So yeah, I've been working on this uh, in the afternoons a little bit. My, my son is in driver's education and he's in class for a couple of hours from like 4.30 to 6.30. So I head over to the local library and I just sit and knit. So I've been working on this and I'm just going to use up the whole the whole ball of yarn. And then I have another skein that I might uh, put together with this one. I think this is another braid by uh, Alonzi Fiber Arts. It was a alpaca cashmere wool blend, I think, and it was a gradient. You really can't see it too well here. I'll insert a, a picture here of what it looks like in the skein, but I balled it up. So what do you think? Do you think that, I mean, I might, I might use this, incorporate this in. We'll see how big this turns out to be or how long I can stand the pattern. <laughs> and uh, so lessons learned, I guess, from this experience is if your yarn doesn't have enough ply twists, if it isn't spun tight enough, um, structurally it can have issues. So for example, I'm knitting this and it's looking okay. And maybe it's partly the fibers too, but I can see that it's already uh, pilling quite a bit, just, you know, sitting in my bag. So I'm just wondering if I had, you know, plied it a little tight, more tightly, uh, you know, uh, tighten up my spinning a little bit. I wonder if it would be a little bit more durable. But I figure I'm just going to make it, wear it as a scarf for a season or two and and then just, you know, get rid of it or felt it or something. So, yeah, I've really been enjoying using my hand spun, and I encourage you guys to do the same. About a month ago, I purchased some CVM fleeces from a lady in Michigan. I got a black one, I got uh, a cream, I've got a white, and then I bought a small uh, Murat. CVM, which is a brown. And right now I'm spinning the black and I am spinning it on my Lendrum. I have one, two, three, four, five bobbins already filled and I'm going to, I have eight Lendrum bobbins. So I'm going to spin all eight and then I'm going to ply one with eight, two with seven, three with six, etc., etc. And I'm going to see how much yardage I get from that. I want to make one of Jennifer Steingass's patterns. I would love to make her arboreal or one of her newer patterns. Um, a yoked sweater that's black with cream on the inside. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm labeling the bobbins as I finish. And I'm spinning it. I'm aiming for a DK weight yarn. And so the way I'm being trying to be consistent here is I'm using a spinner's control card here. I got this. I don't know where I picked this up, but 
what I'm doing is I've got my singles here wrapped around here that I'm aiming for. I've got my samples down here and these are about 11 to 12 wraps per inch according to the spinner's control card. And then here I have, I'm working with my 15 to 1 lace flyer on my Lendrum and then I plied it on a 7.5 to 1 ratio on my little gem wheel. And I'm hoping that I can get a fairly consistent spin and I'm able to actually make uh, make a sweater with this. And I'm trying to be very disciplined and work on this every single day. These are some of the bats that I uh, have made from these, from the CVM fleece. Very, it's really a true black with white, like a white frost throughout. And I am loving this spin so much. It's a fine wool and it's very, very soft, but it's not like a merino soft. You know, merino has a very cottony feel to it. Uh, this CVM is just, it's got, a, it's got some structure to it. It's got some bounce, some loft. And I feel like it's going to be a little bit more durable than just a merino. So the CVM breed, I read about it, is CVM, California Variegated Mutant, which really sounds weird, um, is a breed that was developed in the early 20th century. So evidently, somebody that was raising Rambouillet uh, flock, which is a French merino, purchased a bunch of Romneys from New Zealand. I guess there was some sort of state exposition or some, some sort of, you know, world fair or something like that. And so the shepherd bought all these New Zealand Romney and then they crossed them with the Rambouillet. And then over time it created its own breed. And originally they were all white. But somehow one of the ewes had a spotted you know, they would have spotted lambs or colored lambs and they would cull them right away because, of course, the wool industry wants white, wanted white wool at the time. Well, luckily, somebody was smart and thought, hmm, maybe we should keep these, uh, these colored variations. So the Rommeldale, which was white, um, they, they called the black ones and the gray ones and the, white, uh, the colored ones, they called them uh, CVMs, and that's what I have here. So I'll insert some video right here of, of when I open the fleeces. When you get a, a fleece right off the sheep that's been coated and that's clean, it's such a sensory experience. It's, it's this, you know, you, you touch the fleece. It's, it's got that lanolin feel and it's got sort of a sweet grassy smell. It's, it's this, it's something that will overtake people. Like it's, it's just this very weird and pleasurable kind of experience uh, to, work, to work with a, a beautiful fleece. I highly recommend it. If you are a spinner and you've, all you've been spinning is commercial braids, I highly encourage you to get a raw fleece, um, preferably one that's not too big, but um, that you could really dip your toes in and, you know, and then you have all this fiber, you know, you buy a three pound fleece or a four pound fleece. You don't worry so much about, oh, I, if I don't spin it just right, I'm, I'm not gonna have enough. You know, when you have a precious four ounce braid, it, there's something in me that, oh, I don't wanna mess it up. I, I don't wanna waste any. But when you have a huge fleece, it's just, ah, oh, I have more, you know, not that you're gonna be wasteful or anything, but it just gives you a lot of freedom to experiment and, and just to uh, experience uh, spinning your own hand prepared fiber is the best. So I wound up this from one of my CVMs. And then this one, which is white. It's actually, this fleece is really interesting. It, it's, it's mainly cream, but it's variegated into darker brown shades. So here are two colors of the CVM together. And then when you put that next to the black, I think it looks really nice together. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful wool. So this is a sample, little sample skein that I made uh, from the fiber. I 
I spun a little bit on my wheel and then I just plied it back on itself. And what I'm doing is I'm knitting myself a little, just a little um, mitt. Cause I wanna see, well, I wanna see how it feels and how, you know, what the gauge is. So you can see I've gotten quite far. <laughs> I've got a wristlet. <laughs> So, but I'm going to make uh, a pair of mitts with these. I think I'm just going to color block it. So I think I'm going to go with uh, maybe do a brown for the other part of the, the hand and then just maybe do some stripes and then just throw in the black at the end just to see how it knits up and also how it wears. So maybe wear it around and see if it pills. Um, yeah, there is something really wonderful about... Um, knitting and wearing something made out of your own hand spun. I wanted to talk about today is storing fleeces and uh, the usability of fleeces after you've had them for a while. So if you go down this rabbit hole of spinning and buying fleeces, a lot of people <clears throat> will purchase a lot more fleece than they can actually reasonably process. I admire people who buy one fleece, wash it, make something with it, and then buy another fleece. I tend to accumulate fleeces. So three years ago in the summer of 2016, I had purchased a BFL cross. It was a BFL Rambouillet cross. And I washed a little bit of it. Um, I dyed up a little bit of it. But, you know, the summer ended. I was back at work. I really didn't have time to, to do any fleece preparation. So I had read in uh, Judith McKenzie writes, uh, if you know, look up Judith McKenzie. She's a guru of all things spinning. But in one of her videos, she's talked about how she stores fleeces in a five gallon bucket, like it smashes them down and makes it almost airtight. And then she says she can keep them there for a really long time. Well, that's what I did with this fleece. And I just wanna show you what it, what it looked like after three years of being in the bucket. This is a sample. Do you see it, how yellow it is? It still, it still smells good. It's got that, fleece has a sort of tobacco. I don't know, it reminds me of my grandpa used to smoke a pipe uh, when I was a little kid and it always smelled so good. It reminds me of that. It's that tobacco kind of sweet smell, like a pipe, pipes uh, tobacco. I, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but anyway, so this is what it was looking like in the bucket, right? This is how it washed up. Like, unbelievable I couldn't believe it what I I I was like it's got to be ruined you know I, I looked as uh, you know it's a little bit dry it's so yellow and I'm like oh I was, you know so what I did I soaked it in cold water I, you know maybe for th two or three hours and that releases a lot of the dirt when you when you put it in cold water it releases just this the dirt and even after just a soaking it became pretty white but then I used power scour Beyond Clean Power Scour, and look at it. I mean, it's it's fantastically clean. I was so happy, um, just because, not that this is a license to buy a bunch of fleeces or anything, but you can store your fleeces in a bucket, and they'll be fine. I mean, look at that. Isn't that pretty? I was so excited. So I'm gonna wash up the whole thing this summer and uh, yeah, it's just so pretty. I know I can't, it's so pretty. So I, I don't mean to sound like a commercial for Power Scour or anything, <laughs> but it was crazy. It was crazy awesome. So yeah, this is what you, when you do fleece preparation, you know, you go from this and you get this. It's just, it's so cool. It's so fun. All right. Well, at the beginning of this video, I, I said I was going to talk about some of my knitting projects with commercial yarn. I think I'm going to do a separate video just talking about my other spinning that's not related to hand spun, just because I think that this video has already gone to 30 minutes and I don't want it to be uh, too long. So, um, Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I, I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying a lot of good crafting time. I thank you again so much for subscribing to my channel, for reaching out to me on Instagram or Ravelry. I truly appreciate it. 
the only reason I want to do this podcast is so that I can make friends basically and, and just, you know, share what I'm making, get inspired by others and possibly inspire, um, inspire other people as well. I see that I am actually uh, have 515 subscribers, which is unbelievable. I never thought I could get to 500 subscribers. So I have 515 subscribers. So I am planning something special. I have something coming in the mail. And when it comes in the mail, I'm going to put together a little giveaway. I'm still trying to figure out how I should do the giveaway. Um, should I base it on comments in YouTube? Should I have you go on Ravelry and say hi or I do have a Facebook, uh, a Facebook page, Soulful Spinning on Facebook, but I hardly ever go on Facebook. So I have to figure out how I want to proceed to, to try to, um, I'd like to do a giveaway with people that actually watch me and that are interested in fiber art. So um, what do you think? If you've ever participated in any giveaways on YouTube or Instagram or Ravelry or anything, uh, what do you think is the best way to have a, have a giveaway. So I will have a giveaway in my next episode. I'll talk about um, what that giveaway is going to be. I'm super excited. And uh, yes, I think I'm going to sign off now. Um, I really, again, I really appreciate you so much for tuning in and I hope whatever your fiber journeys are today, I hope that you have a wonderful time and that you're well. So until next time, uh, I'll see you real soon. Thanks again for watching.